I am Libby Duthman, principal of Salinas High School. Salinas High School first opened in 1882 as a secondary school. It was known as Salinas Union High School. It was located on West Alisal Street, across the street from our present day courthouse. In 1920, the school opened its doors at the current location here on South Main Street. It's been a public 9th to 12th grade school ever since. The first graduating class in 1920 had 34 students. Seems so tiny comparison to last year's graduating class, which graduated 568 students. Salinas High has had three main phases due to reconstruction, those being the building of the old school, which served the population from 1920 to 1989, the portable school following the Loma Prieta earthquake between 1989 and 2001, and the new school, 2001 to the present. The building of Salinas High has a notable feature, and that's the bell tower, or sometimes called the clock tower. That has been in place the entire time since 1920 when the school was built. The old school, I was there for about five, six years before we moved to the portable school. And I, mean, I was a student there. It was a very unique campus. The thing that sticks out to me was the, uh, the music wing. There was an S-shaped type uh, hallway, but it was, it was a really cool school. It, uh, I mean, there were, there were rodents in there and the whole bit, but but it was, it was our school. Our inner court was completely closed off. So there were no wings, or I guess we call them breezeways, between the buildings. And we had an auto shop. And we had an area truly designated for ag that was out on the other side of the basketball courts. And the tennis courts were where the 600s are. And we had businesses, and it's just changed in that way. The school was fun. I mean, we, we, we simply, it was our social event. We didn't have the internet. You know, you couldn't sit in your room and be social with somebody. If you wanted to be social, if you're a social animal, you came to school. We had an open campus. We came and went. We didn't have to have a, an ID to get on and off campus. We had a lot of freedom. That was also right when Title IX passed for athletics, so for the first time, girls had interscholastic sports. Our class only had, we had 398 in our class, and we only had three years which meant that our school had about 1,200 students. Coming back from Texas after I'd been gone for eight years, it was different. Slaves had changed, it had grown, the population had, I wouldn't say doubled, but it's doubled since I was in high school. So the dynamics of Slaves High have changed. The size of the school has changed. The 89 earthquake uh, pretty much decimated this school. It happened around five o'clock in the evening. I ran down the hall and I was like ping-ponging against the wall the whole way out. It was shaking the house so violently. My friends at the time were actually in Salinas High School doing a play, my best friend, and she was in the PAC building and um, she said suddenly the lights just went pitch black because there's no windows and everybody started screaming and they said bits of the ceiling were falling on their heads. We had a 50s wing, it was a single story, uh, single sided classroom wing and that pretty much kind of caved in a little bit, the, the walkway did. They shored it up and we stayed in there for a couple more years before we moved to the portable school. Um, but there were just a lot of things that, yeah, the, the earthquake messed it up. We started out as portable high first. We had, um, like the school wasn't done, it was just portables everywhere. For the people that were on the outside looking in at Salinas High School, they looked at Salinas High as a, as a dump, basically. I would never send my kids there. Um, there were a lot of kids that didn't want to come here. We had administrators that wouldn't send their kids here and send them to private schools. But the students made that school uh, a fantastic place and and our staff was made the most of it too. We slowly moved into the new school in I believe 2000 but um, it wasn't until my senior year 2001 that the rest of the school like the 200s wing was fully open uh, which was of course an exciting time for everybody teachers staff students um, the community. My experience has been nothing but positive in the new school. It was better in a lot of ways. I think one of the most exciting parts was having to do with parking. 
prior to that, I remember there was no parking. I, I really don't even know where staff parked. As students, we parked in the neighborhoods down by Washington, and that was just common. The earlier you got here, the better parking spot you got. You see a lot of the same things that I saw when I was in high school. So mostly the dynamics are the same. Uh, kids just stare at their phones a lot more now. And uh, I would say that uh, the school is much bigger, as in there's more people everywhere. I think the only thing that's really changed has been the technology aspect. I mean, nowadays you don't have teenagers anymore. You have screenagers, right? They look at their phone all day long. Probably the population has changed. There's such a large staff now. I really just like the environment overall. Like, it's a lot of people. You meet new people every single day. Teachers are awesome. The curriculum's great. Everyone's really nice and really fun to be around. Like, you always end up making a lot more friends than you think you will. You're looking at a very comprehensive high school right now. We have over 75 clubs for students to enjoy. We have every sport that is offered in CCS with the exception of two. So our sport offerings are massive compared to all the other schools in our surrounding area. Uh, there are also academies that students can enjoy from FAST to Green to FFA, music, Choir. We have just a variety of activities and things for students to join. I think that it helps keeping students connected. It has the coaches working with them also besides just their classroom teacher. It's an extension of the classroom and just helps them, you know, step out and try something new and stretch what they're comfortable with. <laughs> to say being a student athlete the, that comes with so many great memories um, that's how I spent a lot of my time of course after school you build friendships so those are some of my lifelong friends thinking back on memories of, of Salinas High I, I've been around five high schools and some of the most memorable memories uh, academically and athletically have been here at Salinas High I've coached for over 30 some years and some of the, uh, the teams that I've coached here at Salinas High have been football, CCS champs. So the big rivals was Palma. Social interactions were basically the, the Friday night football games. Those were big. Everyone yeah. goes to those, especially Palma. It's like, that's our big rivalry, I guess, okay. is Palma. Ours yeah. is North High. There were only four teams in the league. We, we uh, played against Santa Cruz, Watsonville, Monterey, and Salinas. The big rivalry was Monterey Salinas. Beating Palma was always a fun experience. Our senior year, they beat Palma. That was like the first time in 25 years that they had broken the streak. So we we celebrated it like crazy. Creating discipline here in athletics, I think, pays off not not only for those guys who went on to do some great things, but for every student to be able to go to a job, be there on time. And, and do their best. There's certain things that uh, happen in, in, on the athletic field or whatever team you're doing that uh, doesn't happen in the classroom. We can incorporate certain values that we value as a team, as coaches. On top with athletics, but also our grades, right? We're, we're not athlete students per se, we're student athletes. You know, on a wrestling team, uh, we actually had, most of my guys were good students. I said, I want to coach athletes that go on to, to school, you know, and compete at, at the next level. Well, I came to Salinas High, I came to the right place. There are some really amazing people. We have a couple different pro sports athletes. The ultimate one that I recall and dear to me because I'm an ex pole vaulter was John Prater. He went on to qualify for the Olympic trials in Eugene, Oregon. He's currently, right now, training in Georgia for the 2020 Olympics. We do have a lot of other people. Surgeon General for the Navy, lots of artists. We have a writer. John Steinbeck graduated in the class in 1919. He is definitely our most notable alumni. The evolution has occurred in all schools in that activities are now more fun-based, where when the school opened in 1920 on Main Street, you were looking at a country that had just come out of World War I, and so a lot of the activities were based on getting military strength and people stronger. So there are some urban legends about Slims High School, that there's a shooting range, 
there was. And it's down in the basement area underneath the uh, small gym. So you had shooting ranges on campus, you had gymnastics on campus, you had things that were getting people prepared to fight and to defend the country, which is a lot different than the mission we have now. One of the big differences about Salutis High is just simply the length of time it's been around. There are so many wonderful traditions here and the mix of old and new is something you just can't invent. One of my goals for Salinas High is to continue to maintain this beautiful structure. And I think that's something that everyone in the community has a responsibility for, all the past cowboys and the present cowboys, because it is such an iconic, beautiful building here on South Main Street. Salinas High has always held a special place in my heart. Um, it's, it, it kind of grabs you and it won't let you go. The feeling of family and working together for something and being very proud to be a cowboy. I really feel at home here at Salinas High, being a, a past student from here. Um, I'm very prideful about the school, like I said, I, I love that the school has pride. We are the salad bowl center of the world, so I, I really like that it's very agriculturally focused. Like, you know, I like that we have the agriculture programs and um, we have a really unique blend of all nationalities and cultures and I, I like that blend. I think it makes um, us a diverse and unique school. The habits I learned here are key. Where it's going to go hopefully is there's going to be more people who uh, foolishly take the same uh, ideological approach that I did which is come back and teach and get back to the school. Well, you know that expression, once a cowboy, always a cowboy. I mean, I can't ever, ever see myself working anywhere else. I love what I do and I love, I love what I do just as much today as I did the first day I did it. Free handshake before we go. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing you can point to Salinas High School is the culture and the climate of the students. You walk onto this campus and there's a feeling that people belong here, they enjoy where they're going to school, they enjoy the atmosphere they're surrounded by. Everybody's going to say this as a teacher, but I can tell you that our student body is probably one of the best I've ever, ever got to work with. They are just special people that go to school here.